this year is a little different. You know, you, you're going in this race, you're thinking, man, last year Phoenix or Regal Jeremy in 18th, 19th lap. You know, it's just one or two guys. This year I have my my whole team that's did good so far. There's four other riders and everyone else on Kawasaki. And I mean, there's going to be six guys going in this race that can win. I mean, I had one race, there was 11 guys that won a race before in their careers. So <laughs> it's going to be a battle for sure. The two pressure races are pretty much gone for me. You know, Anaheim's a big one for me, and San Diego as well. So we're away from home, and, and uh, nothing to do but focus. Plus, came away victorious after the aggressive block pass in 98. But will the five-time champion let this happen again? First time, Supercross invades the home of the Diamondbacks. From Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona, it's round three of Pace Supercross. We'll be getting right to the racing. Our qualifying procedure starts with two heats, the top four riders from each heat advancing to the main event, the rest moving on to the semifinals, where the top five get the transfer. Only two more spots at the 250 gate, those two coming out of the last chance qualifier. The earlier you qualify, the better choice of gate position. While the riders are getting ready for the opening heat, let's check out this week's Honda Close-Up. Whenever a rider like Mikel Pichot is running strong, there's always that dedicated guy called a mechanic behind the scenes getting the job done. In this case, his name is Dan Bettley. When I started uh, in 1981, I started for Kawasaki Motors, and I started the Team Dream program. And when I began there, I knew right away that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to become a race mechanic. Getting a job with Team Honda was dumb luck, according to Bentley. He called team manager Dave Arnold about being Larry Ward's mechanic. Arnold gave him the job, but it was for a young Jeff Stanton. Dan was very, very strict, and uh, I was very dedicated and, uh, you know, put a lot of effort into what I'd done, and he was the same way. A little bit grumpy, but uh, I, I mean, that was the best thing for me. Winning the title that very first year, then the next season, paved the way for both Stanton and Betley's careers. The most exciting Supercross title, though, was Stanton's third. Bradshaw needed only a third of the season's last race to clinch the crowd, and nothing was going right for Betley. I was preparing the bike that night in my garage. The bike was in shambles. Everything was bent. You know, I was calling, ordering, getting parts. I basically rebuilt my bike that uh, Saturday morning. Uh, not in a good mood. He came together with uh, Bale during his heat race, had to go to the semi, and uh, just was just really stressful for the entire day. And then for the main event to come around and, and just on the radio just thinking, why? What's going on here, you know? We both showed our emotion that day with, with Dan Bake breaking the pit board over his knee and uh, me stopping and picking him up and slapping him in the head. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. Uh, a great feeling for both of us. After a couple of years hiatus, Dan Bentley is back doing what he loves best, trying once again to mold the champion. I want to be competitive. I want to see this team back, you know, on top again. And this team's going to win as a team, and we're going to lose as a team. And, and, uh, and that's the way it's going to be. That's the way I look at it, and I think everybody else feels the same way. Our cameras zeroing in on Mikel Pichon, one of those Honda riders. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Honda's been on a juggernaut the early part of this season, and we're going to find out if they're going to continue. We've got four of their key riders in this heat. Start off with number five, Mikel Pichon. Right next to him will be Kevin Windham on the 14th. Then it'll be Mike LaRocco. He's had two third-place finishes, and then two more gates down the number 44 of Sebastian Tortelli. A lot of Honda red in this one, guys. After practice, David Bailey, number 934 might be in the mix there. David Villeman on a Yamaha. Well, to add to that confidence, too, that he had, I think, that he displayed to me in practice uh, was the fact that he was up front for so long in San Diego. When the leaders caught him, he was able to repass, mix it up a little bit. Now, if he gets back in that situation, I think he'll be a lot more comfortable and make better decisions. A sellout crowd here in Phoenix, Arizona, 50,000, awaiting our first Supercross action of the evening. Board is sideways. The gate will drop from five to ten seconds. And our opening action is underway. Villament got really boxed out. He goes into that corner last. And out in 
front, number 11 is Jeff Emmy. Does that surprise you? Not at all. Jeff had a great place to start from. There you see McCormick having to start from last. Going a little bit wide in the corner, he got pushed out. Grayson Goodman right there, number 93. Talking with him after practice, he said, boy, my bike is so fast, I gotta get used to it again. He said, watch me on the start. And sure we've enough. Got, we've got two Team Suzuki riders in front of the Honda riders, Larry Ward and Robbie Rayner. They're trying to really regroup on this season. Couple of riders going down on and the And it is a yard them. sale behind that triple. Look at the riders down. Villeman is one of them. And Villeman is hobbling off the track. Our first lap complete, it's Jeff Emmy, who's had a phenomenal practice week. Lynn Robbie Raynard, Lynn Larry Ward, and there's David Villeman, as we mentioned earlier. Hard to tell exactly what happened there. I was watching the leaders out front, but looks like he's going to the semi, no doubt. Maybe not going to be 100% there. So the Red Cross flag will be out when Jeff Hemming and Robbie Raynard clear this corner. They will not be able to triple this area. They'll have to take every jump singularly. Larry Ward in third. These heat races mean so much, Art. It's great to see that kind of sportsmanship. Emick taking a little bit of a chance by not just doubling that first one, just in case Rainer was ready to do it behind him. This is an opportunity for Emick. Get out, get the whole shot that he's accustomed to. See if he can get something started this year. There you see Mike LaRocco in fifth and back Grayson Goodman. Remember, they only take the top four. Getting the transfer to the main event after our opening heat one is over with. Out in front, Jeff Emmick. What a confidence builder this could be for him. And then Roger DeCoster has got to be feeling better. He's got a couple of his guys going to the main event. They can just hang on here. It'd be nice to see him get up and push Emmick. Maybe take the top two spots, but Emmick is hungry right now. This is where he got things started. There's his mechanic, Jeremy, looking on, going, come on, Jeff. Stay up there. This Jeremy Albrecht. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Guys, one of the interesting things was talking to Bruce Sternstrom, the team manager, and he said, you know, really, our guys are doing better at this stage last year than they were, or they're doing it better this year than they were at this stage last year. And it seems to be bearing some fruit. They had a nice heart-to-heart. -heart. Everybody said, hey, we know we've got the talent. Let's go out and prove it. So Robbie far. Raynard now is starting to test Jeff Emmy. Big time, David Bailey. It was bar to bar there for a moment. Well, Jeff left just a little bit of room. You can see that... Right now, it looks like Rainer's maybe just a little bit faster than Jeff. Jeff is so crafty to be able to pick the right lines to hold him off. Rainer's got a lot more low end on his motor now. I talked to his dad earlier during practice. Last week in the San Diego, he had to clutch it so much, his arms started pumping up. This week, he's much happier with the power band. See if he can put it to use. Mike LaRocco has moved into the final transfer spot with Mikel Pichon right behind him. And we'll be right back to see who our four qualifiers will be. Suzuki Fest 99, folks, step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki sport bike and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, son, a Suzuki Katana 600 and a helmet? Or maybe a Bandit 1200 and a new leather jacket? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, hey, no need to get nasty. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. It is an historic occasion. An event so far-reaching, it could affect nearly every home in America. So we're making sure all our plans are in place. That every system has been checked, and rechecked because interest rates are at historically low levels and there's never been a better time to refinance a home which means we have only one purpose hello thank you for calling countrywide home loans this is maria how may i help you to get your application started refinancing your home could lower your monthly payments or cut years off your loan and countrywide makes it easy to get started right now over the phone Interest rates may never be this low again. So make history. Call 800 Easy 877. Countrywide. Easy. Really. Everybody I know calls her the cow, even people I don't know. I'm doing parade for the cow because it definitely needed something to honor this moment. 300,000! It's really saying something to me.
to think that we went through 15 New England winters. Yay! It's just an amazing vehicle. It's been a, a really good buddy. It's been a good friend. And heck, we just need another excuse for a party. Toyota trucks. How many miles can you put on? Hey, Supercross is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs and the financing to get them. And by Honda, maker of the world's most powerful custom motorcycle, the Valkyrie. Welcome back to Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. Round number one of our qualifying action. Jeff Emmy getting pressure from number 17, Robbie Rayner, to the Team Suzuki as they go over the triple. The fans already out of their seats here in Phoenix, Arizona. Larry Ward is currently in point. And we've got a great battle for the final transfer spot between Michonne and LaRocco. That's where the battle is. With Rainer making the pass on Emmy. Rainer had to work for that, and he kept Emmick guessing. He set it all up as the corner before the triple. Emmick thought, well, I better protect the inside line. Rainer went wide, set it off. He was inside all the way. So with almost three laps to go, Rainer has taken the lead away from Jeff Emmy. But they are so far out in front of the others. As we take a look at Rainer, Emmick, Ward, LaRocco, and Pichon, the top five. The real battle now is for the final transfer spot. Pichon starting to put pressure on Mike LaRocco. And it's interesting because LaRocco comes into this race not 100%. Last week's crash with Ward left Mike stiff and bruised. Well, actually, it was just kind of a, like a thigh bruise. Uh, when I landed on Larry, ended up landing on his bike and just, you know, banging my leg. But it really just started stiffening up for the main and um, the parade lap. And uh, first five laps of that race, I was really stiff. But... Once the blood flow got going, it kind of went away last week. And, but after the race, I ended up going to the emergency room because I was hating it. But um, <clears throat> I actually, you know, went home on crutches and everything, and I couldn't even walk till Tuesday. But um, since then, it's gotten a lot better, and I, I really don't feel that bad now. It's just pretty tight. Back to the live action as our cameras have zeroed in on Larry Ward, number seven. He had an awful opening round, an 18th at Anaheim, and it came back with an eighth place in the second round. Here's Michonne, number five. He has passed LaRocco for the fourth spot. That's going to send LaRocco to the semi. Maybe, Maybe. LaRocco needs a little bit more time. If you can't get him back to uh, try to loosen up that injury. Makes up a little bit of time right there. Whoever the rider is ahead has got to go in and protect the inside line, which allows the guy behind him to go out wide and get all that momentum. So it'll be a lot of strategy tonight, especially when these guys get all bunched up in the main. When they come around, it'll be the white flag lap, the final lap of our opening qualifying heat. So right now, it looks like Raynard, Emig, Ward, and Pachon with LaRocco trying his best to get in there. That also means that Tortelli, Wyndham, and several other outstanding riders will have to go to the semifinal round. These guys still battling. See, you gotta take that inside right there to protect your line, but then LaRocco gets oh. all that momentum. He took a little triple over the ripples, and they uh, scrape a little uh, plastic right there. Still Pichon and LaRocco battling it out for the final transfer spot. I'm sure LaRocco doesn't want to have to go for the semifinal round. The fact that both of these guys are on Hondas doesn't matter either. They're going for everything right now. LaRocco cutting to the inside. LaRocco edges him out of the line. Oh, my goodness. The winner of the qualifying heat, almost anticlimactic for that great battle for the final transfer spot. It was Robbie Raynard winning his first heat qualifying heat of the 99 season. Emmy, Ward, and LaRocco on their way to the main event. Marty Reed will be getting with our winner in a moment. Fitness. It's much more than just physical. It's about feeling good on the outside and the inside. It's about having energy and releasing stress. It's about being satisfied with who you are and being happy. 
With Leesburg Body Works' unique approach to fitness, you can become fit on the outside and fit on the inside. Make your last Millennium New Year's resolution a commitment to yourself. Join Leesburg Body Works today for only $19.99. Time DC, and this one's gonna blow you away. The 42nd annual World of Wheels with NASCAR superstar Sterling Marlin, plus the skins Dexter Manley, Charles Mann, and Daryl Green, and wrestling sensation Sable. See Mark Martin's Eagle One NASCAR winner and the All American Motorcycle Show. It's smoking. It's World of Wheels, February 5th, 6th, and 7th at Capital Expo Center, front of the GM Performance Web Show Car Series. Sterling Sharp, Chris Mortensen, Dan Patrick, Tom Jackson, Chris Berman, Mark Malone, Joe Theismann, Jim Kelly, Stuart Scott, Mike Tirico. That's our Super Bowl team. What's yours? Nobody covers the big game like ESPN. Catch a week's worth of complete coverage on ESPN, ESPN2, ESPN News, ESPN Classic, ESPN Radio, and ESPN.com. Then after the game, tune in for post-game analysis and highlights. Tune in today. So it's Robbie Rayner, Jeff Emig, Larry Ward, an encouraging round for him, and Mike LaRocco at the wire. They've qualified for the main event out of our first qualifying heat here in Phoenix, but that means that quite a few of the Honda, Team Honda team, will have to go to the semifinals, which includes Pachon, Tortelli, and Wyndham, along with, of course, David Villeman, who crashed early in that qualifying heat. Let's go down to Marty Reed with our winner. That's what's great about this sport. We focused early on the Hondas, thinking that that juggernaut might continue, but Robbie Rayner, you proved that, uh, hey, Suzuki's are okay right now. Yeah, my Suzuki runs really well. You know, I'm going to go out there and hopefully kind of break this Honda streak out there in the main event. You know, I feel really good, and my bike's running really well, so, you know, I'm just going to go out there and have some fun and see how things work out. You broke a sweat, but you didn't look like you pumped up at all. You, you ready to go right now for the main? I got a little nervous when I got out front, but, you know, it's just going to come with, like, riding with them, you know. If I just ride comfortable and smooth, I can ride it forever. Well, you got a little time to cool off and get ready. We'll see you in that main event. I think it'll be good. Getting set for our second qualifying heat now. It includes our points leader, Ezra Lusk, and his rival, Jeremy McGrath. What an interesting matchup here in the early going, David Bailey. Right off the bat, the two guys that battled in the Phoenix round last year, there back you. and forth, there they are. Ezra number four, John Dow, Damon Huffman, Jimmy Button, Timmy Ferry, also in this mix. Steve Lampson of Chaparral, Bill Lawrence, uh, one of the top privateers, along with Tim Ferry. Greg Albertine, Heath Boss, Clowers, Frenet, Jason Frenet from Canada, Kaga from Japan, Sebastian Waugh from Canada. Almost an international field as well as we're set to go for our second qualifying round. Who gets the whole shot? Jeremy McGrath really pulls a good one this time. He's been working on starts all week long. He said he was having so much power off the gate that he was having clutch problems. It's also, he's had a tough time keeping the front end down as well. He's got to slip that clutch so much, but he dialed it in perfect that time. Lust getting right into second, so this is the battle everyone came here to see. They're already on their feet. They are. These fans are so great here in Phoenix. Jeremy McGrath, Ezra Lust. Flash bulbs going off everywhere. Sebastian Waugh out of Canada in third. Number 21 and, and moving into third right now is Greg Albertine of Team Suzuki. So all the Team Suzuki riders doing much better here in the qualifying heat. McGrath is just taken away with it. Ezra Lust just riding very coolly. I think Ezra just may not want to show McGrath too much. He's just going to watch what he's doing. I'm sure somewhere during this heat, he'll see if he can close the gap. Just to send a little message, but passing it really wouldn't make that much sense. Main event's a whole other story, and if he passes him, you may never get him in that same spot again. Jeremy wouldn't let it happen. So it's Lusk, Albertine, and Dowd, along with Buck, our top five riders. I get the feeling in this particular round in McGrath going the other way there to the whoops. Really here to make a statement. Put a stop to Lusk's confidence. And Lusk is, seems to be 
seems content to just finish in the top three all during the season. Let Jeremy have the win if he wants, but be consistent, be there at the end, win the championship. Jeremy Button in the four stroke. He's going through his lessons. Tim Ferry right behind him. Ferry is the top privateer in points right now, and uh, he's doing a good job. Whoa. They, they collide and they go down. Tim Ferry and Jimmy Button. Button hoping he didn't stall that four stroke. If it were a main uh, main event, that is. Well, he's having to restart it. So they'll both go to the semifinal rounds. Tim Ferry looks like he got clipped. Let's take another look. Well, they head through the whoop section. You see how much air Jimmy Button's getting. A little bit different timing than Ferry. Ferry's doubling sooner. Button doubles into the corner. They collect right there. Just an unfortunate thing that happened last weekend. Albertine landing on Ezra Lust in the second lap of the main event. Same thing, one of those rhythm sections where the guys had a little different idea of how to get through there. I don't think Button expected a ferry move in that far to the inside. And so they're on their way to the semifinal round as we take a look at our leader, Jeremy McGrath. Well, the one thing he told me time and time again is that I've got to start getting better opening starts. And if I'm going to contend and, and win a race, and gosh, if he doesn't take off on this qualifying heat and do exactly what he's been practicing. Let's go to Marty Reed. Well, uh, to further that point, Art, the reason he felt like he needed the better starts was he's been one of the critics of the tracks. He's saying they're just too easy. Everybody can make the triples. Everybody can make it through the rhythm sections. So if I don't get a good start, I'm right there in the mix with everybody else, and it's paying dividends right now. We'll wrap up our second qualifying game from Phoenix with more Supercross action in a moment. It's the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world like this the Valkyrie from Honda virtually everyone who applies for this visa credit card will be approved if you meet these minimum requirements you will be approved for this unsecured visa credit card this means you're not required to pay a security deposit to obtain your visa credit card even if you've been turned down before and regardless of your past credit history now you can be approved for the credit you need with no security deposit required this is a limited time offer find out if you're among the thousands who will be approved for this no risk unsecured visa credit card call our toll free number now your dad won an SB? Yep, my dad won an SB. The boy is lying to his friends. His father did not win the SB. I did. In 1993. And the winner is the rabbit. <laughs> It was a magical evening. The 1999 ESPY Awards, live February 15th, 7.30 p.m., hosted by Samuel L. Jackson, the greatest night in sports, sponsored by Pennzoil and General Motors. The highlight of my life. We're re-entering the action here in our second qualifying heat from Phoenix, Arizona. It is round three of Pace Supercross action. Jeremy McGrath is our leader, number four on Team Honda. Ezra Lusk is in second place, and you see there's a lot of room behind him before we get to Albertine, Dowd, and Huffman. Only the top four get the transfer to the main event. But I'm noticing Lusk is starting to tighten the screws just a little bit. Just at the same time, he's starting to pick up the pace a little bit and get relaxed. They're going to be catching up to some of the back markers now, lapping the tail end of the field. That'll be, a lot of times, works to the guy in second place's favor. By that time, the leader has gone by. They realize the leaders are there, and they move out of the way for everyone else. Watch Lusk right here. He's going to triple this. It's a nice drive off the backside. He's making time on Jeremy right there, but as soon as you get in traffic and you got somebody right behind you, you can't go wide like that, or they'll come right underneath and steal it from you. You know, Ezra told us earlier, David, that he didn't really expect to win the first race of the year. He thought he kind of had it handed to him. And then the second race, things fell into place. But he wasn't really looking at the beginning of the season to do this well as far as wins are concerned. It's kind of nice to have things go that well. He didn't expect it. He started off as good as he can. He's got all the momentum. Everyone's gunning for him. He's full of confidence. I think he's got a little bit more under the hood. 
John Dowd and Damon Huffman are battling it out. Number 31 on the Kawasaki. John Dowd on the Team Yamaha. And closing the gap right now is Ezra Lusk with two laps to go out front. McGrath, Lusk, Albertine, and Dowd currently. But Huffman with pressure on Dowd and Lusk with pressure on McGrath. Huffman can just smell it. If he can get around Dowd right here, he's in the main. There you see Lusk. The white flag lap is underway. We'll see where Lusk tries to make a showing here. How important is it for this pass? Or do you think he's just going to take second? I think he's already sent the message to Jeremy that he can close on him. Jeremy will be thinking about that in his chair before the main event. <laughs> Lusk already knows it. Like I said, if he passes him, he may just show him a little something he doesn't want to. He might be able to use it in the main event. Lusk on the rear tire now of Jeremy McGrath. Both behind Tim Ferry, a lapper. The checkers will be out. After the turn and the technical section, it's the finish line jump. The checkers for Jeremy. It's, it's McGrath and Lusk as we go back in the pack for the final transfer spot. David Huffman. John Dowd with a good inside line. And so it is McGrath, Lusk, Albertine, and Huffman. Those are the riders going to the main event. Jimmy Button, Lampson, Lawrence, Dowd, they'll have to go to the semifinals before qualifying. And Marty will get together with our Heat winner, Jeremy McGrath, when we return. Never before has there been a cruiser as comfortable as the Suzuki Intruder 1500LC. A bike so smooth, so impressive, you'll want the end of the ride to be just the beginning. Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-417-1200. Your dad won an SB? Most outrageous play of the year, 1996. The field goal jumper. The 1999 ESPY Awards, live February 15th, 7.30 p.m., hosted by Samuel L. Jackson, the greatest night in sports. Returning to the Phoenix area in 1997 after a five-year absence was not a happy occasion for Ryan Hughes, Damon Bradshaw, Steve Lampson, and Doug Henry, all getting together in the first turn. Jeff Emig out in front, but not for long, as Jeremy McGrath would slide by on the outside to the lead. More bad luck. This time, the yellow clouded McGrath would lose the lead later to finish in seven. Number 11, Lusk, would find himself in the hay after a spill. Damon Huffman later would join Lusk when he went off the track in a turn. At the checkers, it was Jeff Emming with his first win of the year on way to five victories and the championship. Here are the four qualifiers to our main event, leading off with Jeremy McGrath and Ezra Lusk, who closed rapidly on McGrath. Albertine of Team Suzuki and Damon Huffman an encouraging performance as he passed out over the finish line to make it into the main event and failing to qualify Button, Lampson, Lawrence and Dowd out of this particular heat. So Marty Reed's down uh, ready down below with Jeremy McGrath. Marty. You know before today's race the Yamahas all of them were lifting the front end it looked like everybody was going to either a different gear or tire combination you got the start you wanted what was it for you um well combination of uh bridgestone you know they've been working really well with us and actually we've been getting a lot of traction so i think we added a little bit of air pressure and made the wheel slip a little more and came right out front talk about the fact that ezra was closing were you sort of realizing that were you playing it sort of easy saving some energy no i wasn't really i knew he was closing but also when he closed on me a bunch it was um the lappers were right there um 
You know, it's a little bit easier to run in second than it is in the lead, and it's only the third race, and I haven't been out in front that much, so uh, just got to get used to it. You liked the view, though, didn't you? Yeah, I like the view of having no one in front of me. I love that. <laughs> we'll see you in the main. Okay, thanks. With the sellout crowds we've been getting lately, it'd be to your advantage to look ahead to the future events and get those good tickets now. Seattle and Anaheim round out our western swing before heading south to Tampa, Atlanta, Dallas, Daytona, and then Houston. Then it's up to Minneapolis on March 20th, over to St. Louis and Pontiac, and a trip to the Superdome. That'll be that r crazy racing town coming up next of Indianapolis. Then we finish things up in Las Vegas, Nevada. The 25th anniversary celebration of Pace Supercross continues from Phoenix in just a moment. A crowd of two-wheeled enthusiasts gathers at the Honda factory in Marysville, Ohio. Today, we are proud to introduce to you the Honda Shadow Aero. The bike's a real hit with the crowd. The Aero sports the latest in streamlined design with an exhaust pipe right out of the pages of science fiction. Here's Miss Arrow showing off the bike's dazzling colors. The Honda Arrow is available today, and what the verdict in Marysville? There you have it, and it's full speed ahead for the bike of tomorrow. Sprint is creating a world of unlimited possibilities, a world where time and distance don't matter anymore. Call 1-800-PIN-DROP now and switch to Sprint Unlimited. Introducing Sprint Unlimited, the only way to get unlimited calling every Saturday, every Sunday, all weekend long for just $25 a month. And your weekday calls are just a dime a minute, anytime, anywhere. Come live in a world created around you, a world where weekends never end. Because only Sprint Unlimited gives you unlimited calling every weekend. And every weekday call is just a dime a minute. If you make over an hour of calls each weekend, you could save by switching to Sprint Unlimited. Call 1-800-PIN-DROP now for unlimited ways to save on long distance and leave the past behind. Sprint ahead. I never want to see you again. Wait, where are you going? Aren't you bummed? She took my favorite jersey. The 1991 main event would have two former Supercross champions out in front, Jeff Stanton and Jeff Ward. But this would turn out to be John michelle Bale's race. The number eight Honda makes the pass into third. In the same area of the Sun Devil Stadium track, Jeff Ward would be the next victim to lose his spot to Bale. It was then more work for Jean Michel to pass his Honda teammate Jeff Stanton. That would happen on the front straightaway. The Frenchman would win eight races that year and the 250 title. The capacity crowd here at the Bob has already seen some terrific racing action, and we've just had a couple of qualifying heats. Art Ekman along with David Bailey. And David, such excitement. And I know Roger DeCosta right now has got to be feeling a little bit better in that his three team Suzuki riders don't have to go to the semifinal round after having some problems in the first two rounds. Well, it, I thought Larry Ward and, and Albie both rode strong races, but the guy that really stood out was Robbie Rayner. Emick finally got a hole shot. Uh, so he's getting back, you know, accustomed to running where he's comfortable. But uh, Rainer just was all over him and worked at it to finally make this move stick. Jeremy McGrath and Ezra Lusk. Uh, we saw that battle early in qualifying heat number two. Ezra pulling up. Looked like he could almost take him anytime he wanted to. Well, I think it was a, a smart ride by Lusk. What I'm seeing in Lusk is that uh, he's got the confidence that McGrath has had all these years. McGrath got out there, got the whole shot, and he said, I'm not comfortable with being out here. It's the first time this season I've had a, that clear of a shot. And uh, having Lusk breathe down your neck and those lappers, I think, he just kind of backed it off a little bit. You'll see what we can do in the main event. And, of course, one of the most exciting features of the qualifying heats were those close finishes for the final transfer spot. Well, LaRocco and Pichon going at it in the last straightaway. LaRocco getting over the double and getting that transfer spot. So Pichon now having to go to the semi. And then Damon Huffman, nice move in the same exact place. That That's an excellent uh, section of jumps leading up to the finish line. I think we're going to see that all night long. This is one of the uh, few stadiums that you can be at trackside and also be 
poolside. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Were you guys talking to me? I'm sorry, I'm working on my moon tan. I'd say sun, but obviously it's a little late for that. Me and my buddies here, we're uh, kicking back and having a great time here at the, the, the at sort of right center field. A couple of guys we want to talk and update you about. Remember two races ago how rough it was for Jeff Emig and Damon Huffman? They had to go to the LCQ to get into the main event. Well, now each one of them makes it through their heat, so that's got to be a big boost for Team Kawasaki just as much as you guys were talking about Team Suzuki doing very well tonight. We also checked in with Jimmy Button and Tim Ferry. No major damage to either bike, and it looks like both of those guys will be ready to go in the semis. Guys, um, anybody got any swim trunks? I forgot mine. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. You know, in the semifinals, as we look forward to more great racing action, it's like a Team Honda battle there. Well, the juggernaut he talked about in that heat race, they're all, except for Lusk, going to be in the semifinals, so bad news for the privateers that this action just keeps getting better also coming up later during our semifinal round we're going to be talking with Johnny O'Mara uh, the former great uh, racer himself but he's got an update on the condition of uh, Ricky Carmichael which I know all the fans are anxious to hear so we'll be right back with that exciting action for the semifinal rounds after this Toyota-thon continues, extended through January, with terrific new offers like 99 Camry leases, with zero, nothing due at lease signing. That's right, there's no down payment, no security deposit, no first month payment. When you lease Camry for just $2.79 a month, or buy now and save up to $1,000 on a Camry with air, full power, and more for less than a 98. Toyota-thon, the great deals continue. Mr. P's Etiquette Club, tip number one. Never distract a putting golf. Focus, but not, you know, looking. Tip number two. Cellular phone calls are unacceptable during a game. <laughs> and don't gloat if you win ESPN Senior PGA Tour sweepstakes. Presented by Royal Caribbean. You can win a trip to the 2000 Royal Caribbean Classic and a cruise. To enter, watch the Royal Caribbean Classic, listen for the shot of the day, and call the number shown, or enter at ESPN.com. 1987 was only the second race in the Phoenix area after Rick Johnson won the first. And it was RJ again looking strong and the Honda getting the whole shot. But Jeff Ward would not be denied after passing Ricky Johnson in the first few laps. Ward would go on to win his fifth of the year despite RJ's love tag. Ward on way to the title over Johnson. It was Warney's second Supercross crown in three years. Welcome back to Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona, as we get set for our second semifinal round. Lots of Honda riders in this one. Let's take a look at the Suzuki track map, though, David Bailey. Well, first of all, you can see how they've highlighted this starting line right down the middle. Nice big sweeping corner. Everyone's getting through there safe. But let's take a look at corner number three. The riders are going to be getting in there. You see that they're going to want to swoop around here to get a run at this whoop section, and guys are going to come in here and try to block pass. Boom, right there. And then over to another rhythm section, a whoop section right here. But leading up to the finish, this has been interesting. Between eight and nine, there's a lot of different uh, options to go through there. Depending on how you go through corner number eight, you can double here or you can roll that one and double these. We've already seen two riders transfer just in that last lap on that straightaway to the main event. And uh, Damon Huffman and Mike LaRocco are. We've got lots of uh, Team Honda riders, as we mentioned. Here's Mikel Pichon, Sebastian Tortelli, Kevin Windham. Getting set to try and qualify here in our first semifinal round where the top five will advance to the main event. Also, Pedro Gonzalez, Lance Smale, Koikita, Narita, Grayson Goodman, Foster, Blinkstad, McCormick, Smith, Terlicki, Pavoni, Brock Sellers, a 125 rider, and David Billiman, who had a, a, a terrific crash in the qualifying heat, but uh, got back, lipped off the track, and uh, seems like he's Ready to go here for the first semifinal to try to get to the main event. Okay, let's get ready for it. The gate's about ready to drop, and it is down. Let's see who will get the whole shot. David Milliman. That was Milliman beautiful. from the outside. 
Beautiful. He actually lined his bike up a little bit of an angle so he could just hopefully do what he did if he got a good jump off the gate and it worked perfect. So he will strut his stuff where he likes to be out in front. A great rhythm rider. Joining us here during the first semifinal round is a former champion in his own right, Johnny O'Mara. Johnny, I know you're very, very close to Ricky Carmichael. How is uh, Ricky's spirits coming along? Actually, his uh, spirits are, are pretty well for what happened. Uh, you know, he's definitely bummed he's not here tonight, but also, you know, actually, he's actually real upbeat about his speed he had in San Diego, and he's looking forward to get back on his bike here in a few weeks. The battle for second is on. Number 44 is Tortelli. Number five is Pichon, and Kevin Windham is right behind him. Well, it was a, a gruesome, gruesome accident, and I know he hasn't had many accidents uh, that were serious like that. His reaction had to be one of uh, terrific fright. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it did scare him. You could see it in his face, and uh, I think it would have scared anyone to see a, a hole in your leg the size of a foot peg, and uh, that's actually exactly what happened is that foot peg went in the right of his groin there on his right leg, so uh, it would have scared anybody. And, of course, he came out with a cracked pelvis, but uh, that really wasn't what has delayed him now for about three weeks. He expects to be back in time for Tampa. It was the uh, it was actual the puncture wound, I guess, that uh, was the most serious and they had to fix up. Here's the pass, Sebastian Tortelli in front of his fellow Frenchman, David Villeman. Well, Tortelli just backed that back in right up into the berm and squared it off and right back underneath Villeman. Villeman knew he was gonna try to do that, but he couldn't hold the corner tight enough. Villeman having a little problem, and here comes another Frenchman, Mikel Pichon. Pichon cutting to the inside. Windham is now behind Villeman. Pichon didn't even worry about going out and try to block that, uh, make a block pass there. He just tucked it right around the inside, and most of the riders have been trying to go wide to get a run at the whoop section, but Pichon is obviously confident enough in his horsepower to get a good drive right out of the inside. Windham making the pass. Windham's been looking for a breakthrough. He wants to win badly, and with the start he's had this year, he knows that he'll have to do something different next season to get ready for that opener. I definitely am not going to take uh, as much time off. You know, everything's set for contracts and all that goes. And, uh, you know, next year I'm definitely going to race during the off season and, and not, not get, uh, you know, used to taking off during the weekends and, and stay in, in, the, in the racing and, and keep my mind going. Back to our semifinal action. And Johnny O'Mara, your impression of this new venue? Oh, this is unbelievable. Uh, definitely by far the best stadium I've seen. I'm really glad that uh, they decided to put a Supercross here. Was the original impression that Ricky might be back by Tampa a correct one now? Yeah, I'd say that's probably correct. It, you know, when I talked to him just yesterday, he's, he's already talked about Anaheim. That may be a little premature, but you know, when you're only 19, you heal pretty quick. Plus his mind, I think. I remember when I was that age and they had a broken foot or something. I think your mind uh, works in a fast motion and you can actually heal yourself a little bit quicker. I mean, both of us were able to overcome injuries and not even miss a race. You think that there's a chance that uh, since uh, Anaheim is part of that Triple Crown, he might try to get in there and take his chance and see what happens? Yeah, I think there really is a chance. Um, you know, his doctor uh, has okayed him to ride uh, sometime about midweek, and uh, it's up to him how much pain he can endure. And it's definitely the bottom line is uh, if he wants to come out and if he thinks he's 100%. But I think uh, that he'll be back soon. Soon. Tortelli is our leader, but Pichon in second place. And semifinal number one is uh, coming to a conclusion pretty soon. We'll see the checkers fly when we return to Phoenix. Standstill. It might be compared to other sport bikes. That top end, it might be compared to other sport bikes. But at each and every mile per hour in between, comparisons become insignificant specs in the mirrors. The TL1000R, the only one of its kind on the track, from Suzuki. Have you outgrown your current position or find yourself unemployed? Then it's time to look in the National Business Employment Weekly. You'll find top jobs with top companies and advice on landing them. Order six issues of the National Business Employment Weekly now for only $19, a special introductory offer. Look in the National Business Employment Weekly. You'll never know what you'll find. To subscribe, call 800-238-3800. That's 800-238-3800.
I'm on ESPN.com. What I like about it is you can read about, like, pretty much every sport. You know what I really wasn't interested in until I got online was um, horse racing. And they had some stuff about, you know, the Breeders' Cup and the Kentucky Derby. I never thought about this, but, you know, if I lost some weight, you know, got in better shape, I might be able to be a jockey. You know, there's my professional dream right there. I mean, you know, how hard can it be? You hop on a horse and hit it with a stick. Welcome back to Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, Arizona. This is Art Ekman along with David Bailey. Marty Reed also on the scene. And joining us here in the booth, Johnny O'Mara. Johnny, you like this kind of track yourself when you were riding? Uh, yeah, this would have been a good track for me. Um, you know, I definitely like the tracks that were uh, a little bit more technical. And there's a few tricky things on this track that would have uh, been good for me. I, I already think that looking at this finish line jump, that we could have had it laid over farther than anybody we've seen so far tonight, maybe even with the leg out there for a little bit of extra style. Yeah, I could pitch it to the right pretty good. That is a uh, no-show jump. <laughs> We're at our last lap of the semifinal round number one. White flag has been waving for some time as the leaders now, Sebastian Tortelli, number 44, getting a challenge from his teammate, Mikel Pichon. Here's the checkers waving for Tortelli. Tortelli, a yearning, learning year. And uh, Kevin Windham comes across third, Philemon Foyne. And Sellards in fifth, an FMF Honda. We'll be right back with more in a moment. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV, the Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Suffering from the I've had it with the everyday life blues. We got a full tank of gas, three bottles of suntan lotion, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it! Then it's time you escape to Daytona Beach. There's 23 miles of sunny shores, as well as Daytona USA. Golf, fishing, plus Central Florida's top attractions are all within an hour's drive. To find out more about all there is to see and do at Daytona Beach, call for a free visitor's guide. Daytona Beach, big beach, big fun. He's big, he's mean, he's a low-post wrecking machine. Elton heads down to Georgia, where the mighty Blue Devils get it on with Jason Collier and the Jackets. To Georgia Tech, Saturday at 1 on ESPN2. Back in Phoenix, action from our first semifinal. Number 934 is David Villeman. Look at the pass to the inside by Sebastian Tortelli, number 44. Tortelli winning that semifinal on his way to the main event, along with Mikel Pichon, Kevin Windham, Villeman coming in fourth, and Brock Sellers in fifth. Let's go down now to greet the winner, and it's Marty Reed. Well, thanks, Art. A very happy Sebastian Tortelli. A good ride. Great start. Seems to be the starts are key tonight. Uh, yeah, I'm chilly. You know, that's the first time I put a good start. And, uh, you know, straight away, you know, we get on good place. And I can pass David. So, Villeman, that was pretty good. And I, actually, uh, the start, uh, almost 90% of the race, the truck uh, becoming easier and easier to ride. And it's pretty hard to pass now. As far as the main event, will you make any changes now? Is the track starting to run up a little more? Yeah, the truck started to be, you know, more ready. But, you know, against, you know, I prefer when they start getting ready. I ride better and I can get some better lines. We'll see you in the main event. For sure, I hope so. Before our opening round in Anaheim, several great athletes from various extreme sports got together to try their hand at Supercross, and they found out it's not as easy as it looks. Do you know what the name of this event is? This is the first ever inaugural crossover session. Pat Schutte and all the guys at Pace thought of it. They called him up, invited him, emailed him. Davey Coombs is here, a lot of media. It's a media onslaught. And stick around for some people that aren't professionals doing something that requires you to be a professional. So what do you think about this whole motocross thing? I mean, you guys are coming out here with guys from every sport. What are your thoughts? I think it's great. I mean, I can't believe uh, all the athletes here, you know, that, that are into the same stuff we're into. It's funny that we all... I think we're, we all like to be airborne, and this is just one way to be in the air even longer, you know, is having an engine 
you know, with you. It's just, it's just crazy. Every year I come out and um, I watch the season opener. So this year they asked me if I wanted to do the crossover and um, thought it'd be fun. I'm not really a rocket scientist, but I would assume a novice rider really wouldn't want to start on the Anaheim Supercross track. Can you correct me if I'm wrong? No, you're absolutely correct, man. I, I, my dream as well to ride a Supercross track, and those jumps are huge. They're steep. They're, there's uh, no room for error. McGrath's going to be sitting in the stands watching you guys. You feel the pressure? No, he knows I'm going to case and Eddie the Eagle every jump, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> what about you? What's your goal here today? My goal here today is to come out of this alive with all my uh, fingers and uh, my, my head on. <laughs> the Suzuki with the white helmet, David Barrett, huge lead. It's a five-lap race. This is a Hollywood stuntman. He probably jumps off like houses, jumps off buildings. And he's wearing a white helmet. Only squids wear white helmets. Not Hollywood stuntmen that are winning a five-lap race. All these other poor people. Poor people are trying to just make the obstacles. David Barrett, oh yeah, I'm gonna win. Whoopee, whoa, whoa, whoa. This guy like a drag flaming behind a truck with a gorilla taped to his head. So you get the whole shot, full on bust the triple. Everybody up in the stands is yelling, ringer, ringer, fix, I mean. Until I almost ended over a lapper. <laughs> oh, five, was... five lap race. Lappers became a problem. <laughs> I was absolutely out of breath. So the obstacles per se weren't hot for you. No, you noticed, you, I noticed you were fluent over the triples even though I couldn't say it. You looked like you had your <laughs> timing down, but you were saying if you had to keep going, if there was more laps, you would start at the suck pace. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Suzuki handled great, but, uh, you know, I was I was definitely running out of energy. There's no way I can keep up with those guys for 20 laps. There's absolutely no way. They're they're in unbelievable shape. It really uh, gives me a whole new light on the whole sport. Our second semifinal just about ready to get underway. John Dowd is the headliner right here. Clearing out those goggles before getting ready to try and qualify. Also, Steve Lamsey, you see Jimmy Button on the uh, four stroke. Button going down with Tim Ferry in the qualifying heat. Heath Boss, Phil Lawrence, another very fine privateer. Kyle Lewis, who's uh, just tuning up for the National Japanese Series that he won in Japan last year. The 32nd board has been up for some time. We're waiting for it to go sideways. A great crowd here in Phoenix. Four anxious riders trying to qualify to get into the money. You only win money if you make the main event. Sideways, we're about set to go. The pipes hit the dirt. The semifinal number two is underway. Phil Lawrence, number 37, getting the whole shot. And a scramble right behind him with John Dow. John Dow tried to get that block pass that you so alertly pointed out on our track map. That's the spot where we're going to see a lot of bump, and I think in the semi, these guys are a little bit more content to just hold their position, trying to get to the main event. No sense trying anything that aggressive in the first lap. It's Kyle Lewis in third, right in front of Tim Ferry. And in the fourth stroke with Jimmy Button, battling it out with Ferry once again. Dowd using the inside line, working his way to the rhythm section to take the lead away from Lawrence. I think Lawrence content not to put an elbow in there and make a mistake and go down. So our new leader is John Dowd getting in front of the private privateer, Phil Lawrence. Lawrence in quite a battle with Tim Ferry for the top privateer award money. Jimmy Button on the track. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Guys, right before the start of the race, I had a chance to talk to Jimmy. We reported earlier his bike was fine. When he took off his glove, he found out he had a deep gash on his left hand. It's really sore for him to try and squeeze the clutch. It will need stitches when this race is over tonight. So injuring that left middle finger could be a serious occasion for him should he make the main event going to sting just the vibration of a two-stroke alone but as soon as he strap onto a four-stroke it's really going to rattle it so he's going to have to gut it out tonight but once he get out of the race a couple of laps in 
That adrenaline pretty much takes over. You don't feel any more pain. Look at the battle going on here. 37 is Phil Lawrence. Here's Jimmy Button, number 10. He goes wide, tries to get more power down to the dirt by going wide. Dowd, Ferry, Lawrence, and Jimmy Button battling it out. Remember, the top five will be going on to the main event. Joining us in the booth, Sean Palmer. You know, we had that little feature on extreme sports and motocross. And, Sean, I know you just came off the extreme games. Congratulations once again. Most valuable uh, player, I guess they call it. Third time? Yeah, third time in a row, uh, gold medalist. And I'm out here now just watching Phil, my buddy. Hopefully he's still in fourth and uh, qualifying into the main event here. Sean, I know you love this sport. Oh, I love this more important than every, anything I do. It's the uh, best sport in the world, as I would say. And uh, hopefully I get out here next year for the Millennium Opener in Anaheim. So you're, you're really gunning to, to open up uh, in Anaheim, huh? I'd like to. You know, there's no money in this for me. It's all heart, you know, and I just go out and... I just miss it every time I'm out here watching, and I just want to get out there with these guys, so I'll try. In those X Games, you've been Biker X and Border X, but uh, the Triple Gold and uh, Border X, you're tough to beat. You got you youngsters behind you trying to knock you off? Yeah, I got some youngsters, but uh, they ain't got the game down yet. You know, I'm still uh, still the 30-year-old out there dominating that border cross, so we'll see. That's why I want to come out here. It's a full challenge. I got all these kids, and uh, I don't dominate, so it's a... Here's the battle for the lead. John Dowd and Tim Perry. They crisscross Dowd with the advantage as they come across with two laps to go. And we still got Lawrence in fourth. We'll be right back with more semifinal action in a moment. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki sport bike and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, son? A Suzuki Katana 600 and a helmet? Or maybe a Bandit 1200 and a new leather jacket? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, hey, don't need to get nasty. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. If you added up all the hours you've spent boring out cylinders, building strokers, and setting up suspension, you'd have graduated from MMI by now, and you'd be getting paid for doing what you love. Call 1-800-994-3664 to find out how you can become one of the best technicians in the world. Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. You know, ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? If so, Invention Submission Corporation has information to help you get started. ISC is America's largest inventor service firm. Call now and learn how to submit your idea to companies through ISC's data bank and apply for a patent. Even if your idea is just to improve an existing product, call for ISC's free information. For your inventor's information, call toll-free 1-800-652-0101. You don't have time to wait until next week to see Supercross. www.pacesupercross.com puts you where the action is. Live audio webcasts of each and every round of Supercross. Let's prepare ourselves for the second heat of 250 Supercross. You get everything that is Supercross. Event schedule, news, photos, rider profiles and standings. And you can even order merchandise. We'll see you on the web at www.pacesupercross.com. Welcome back to our semifinal action. And still the battle rages on with John Dowd and Tim Ferry, number 20. Ferry on the Nolene Yamaha. This is a fight art between these two front runners. And what's happening is allowing Jimmy Button to get in there and get some momentum. They go to the triple jump. The crowd comes alive. What a battle. Two Yamahas. In front of Tim Ferry. Well, he's on a Yamaha, too. Look at Button just skim the top of that whoop section. Back and forth we go. The white flag is out. It's down. Button and Tim Ferry with Lawrence. Still in point, Sean Palmer. Oh, he's oh, in he's fifth in, now. He's in. just on the bubble. We got to keep it going, Phil. Come on, baby. And he's got a rider right back of him as well to hold off. That's Kyle Lewis, the veteran, who, as we mentioned prior, is just tuning up for Japan. It's heating up. It's heating up in fifth here. Will Lawrence have to go to the LCQ? No, I don't think so. We hope. 
And look at the battle there. Tim Ferry moving into second behind John Dowd. We've got races all over this race. Well, these semifinals are really fun this year, David Bailey. Well, the talent's so deep, you end up with a lot of the big stars into the... Oh, another pass! Ferry! Running for the checkers! Tim Ferry! Uh-oh. Down! But... Lamps at number 24! Lawrence just squeezing and in there. Bill the Lawrence. Yeah, that's my boy Phil. He's in on it. Sean, thanks for joining us. More continued luck. I don't know if you need much luck in that game. You're, you're uh, so powerful. It, it always helps. Thanks a lot. Okay. We'll catch you next time. We'll be back with more action from Phoenix, Arizona after these words. Have you ever bought a new computer, then had a question about it, and then you asked your spouse and your kid? and it was 7 o'clock, and the computer store was closed, and the guy next door who knows everything about computers was on vacation, why not get help 24 hours a day? Go to Dell. We've won PC Magazine's award for desktop reliability and service three years in a row. Right now, you can get a Dell Dimension computer powered by an Intel Pentium 2 processor at 350 megahertz. You'll get an 8.4 gig hard drive with enough storage to use neat stuff like digital cameras. Plus, you'll get a 17-inch monitor, a 4.8x DVD ROM drive, Altec Lansing speakers with subwoofer, and it comes preloaded with Microsoft Windows 98 with work suite and money 99 to do. Oh boy, money stuff. It's a good thing it only costs $15.99. Dell Dimension with an Intel Pentium 2 processor at 350 megahertz. Just $15.99. To order, go directly to the source. Dell, be direct. Stuart and I get the playoff picture back from the darkroom when we come back. We're clear! Oh. The prompter's uh, going too fast. I can't keep up. Come on, it's not the teleprompter. It's you, and it's not the I'm f***ing. I'm throwing. I can hardly talk. Give him some tea. Give him some tea. Oh, oh, I can't go back out. I don't want to go back out. Cut me. Oh. Cut me, Lou. Come on, baby. Come on. Snap out of me. Don't be a lollipop. Get out there. Tonight's your night. Well, without question, these days, the word on everybody's lips. Pay Supercross is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs and the financing to get them. Welcome back to Phoenix, Arizona. The second semifinal just concluded with Tim Ferry doing a great job against John Dowd to pick off the victory over Jimmy Button, Steve Lamps, and Phil Lawrence, all going to the main event with Voss, Waugh, and Lewis. Some names having to go to the LCQ to try to qualify. Let's go down to Marty Reed now, is both, I would imagine, a very happy Tim Ferry. Uh, you're right about that, Art. A very happy Tim Ferry. A man who has on a mission to prove something this year. I mean, it seems like you are possessed. Yeah, I am. I really got my act together this year, and uh, Nolene's just put 100% behind me. We've been uh, working 12, 15 hour days, trying to get our bike working good, and Nolene Namaha is awesome. Well, it came down again, you and, uh, and Jimmy Button going side-by-side, side, handlebar to handlebar. Go back to that uh, heat race when you two came together. Give us your version of it. Um, well, you know, I like to see it on video, but I went to the inside to protect my line, and basically I think he just jumped on me. He, he was going to stuff me no matter what. He was either laying on me or stuff me, and, you know, he was trying, I was trying, and, uh, you know, that's racing, I guess. Well, it, it looked like it was clean this time around, that's for sure. I mean, you guys, nobody made contact. No, you know, I, I don't think he wanted to come underneath me because he didn't want to start anything. I, I didn't want to do anything either. I had to pass him back in the heat race, so I want to make it clean, and not, I don't want to worry about getting knocked down or taking somebody out. It's a lot funner when you race clean. We'll see you in the main. Thanks a lot. These two riders, Kyle Lewis and Grayson Goodman, making it out of the short LCQ to uh, clear the final two positions at the gate now. So the 20-rider field for the 250s are set. Yamaha of Troy's Casey Johnson has proven to be the man to beat after two rounds of 125 action. The future superstars of the sport of Supercross are coming up next. Back at the Bob. It's the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs, 1,520 cc's, only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this, the Valkyrie from Honda. 
beauty, adventure, drama. All these and more can be yours in the wonderful world of art. And with this free art test from Art Instruction Schools, you can find out if you have the interest and desire needed to become a serious art student. To get your free art test without cost or obligation, call this toll-free number. Don't delay. Call this toll-free number now. Call 1-800-344-8300. My girlfriend made me go to Cancun. I could not watch NHL tonight. When I got back, my knowledge was smaller. I hate Cancun. Bob, the 125s are surveying the track right now. Casey Johnson, number 16, comes into this race very confident after winning the first two rounds. I think my chances are pretty good. My Yamaha Troy bike's been working really good, getting me out of the gate. And uh, I don't know, I'm just uh, real confident right now. And so kind of using that going into round three. Take a look at the uh, Suzuki point standings here with the 125s. Casey Johnson and his teammate Casey Lytle neck and neck right there that ought to prove to be an interesting battle in today's race michael brandis alessio Chioti, and isaiah johnson rounding out the top five one interesting story in this 125 field is the italian alessio kiko Chioti. Uh, this is his last supercross race before going back to defend his 125 gp world motocross title in europe he's the size of a ricky carmichael but has the flair of a jeremy mcgrath Alessio Chioti, nicknamed Kiko, brings with him little Supercross experience, but a 125 GP Motocross World Championship. He'd like to come over here, obviously, to learn a little bit about Supercross in the future, when he'd like to come over and do something in America, and also learn from the other riders in Supercross to take some of the knowledge back to his outdoor racing out in, in Europe. His GP sponsor in Europe, Husqvarna, is giving him this look-see in America. Fast by Farachi is his support team here, and then if there's something personal, Bobby Moore is the friend he turns to. Kiko and Bobby Moore raced together for about two or three years and actually lived together for two years, and they have a very good relationship, and when he came over here, uh, they've continued that relationship as well. Kiko always keeps the European fans guessing, like Jeremy. One's never sure what color hair he's going to show up with. Uh, the look over here is real cool with the goatees. He says he fits in real good with the earring and everything, and he, he likes to be part of it. One thing his current visit has convinced him of, he plans on coming back. He's going to continue this year with the 125cc championship, but he's uh, interested in coming over here and racing Supercross in America. Number 33, Yamaha Troy, Casey Lytle, David Bailey. And I just have the feeling that any time he'll break through with a victory against his teammate. I think this is the night, too, that he has a great opportunity. Johnson, you see there, has uh, had a tough week coming into this, so he didn't do his normal routine. Casey Lytle attacked practice. He looked super. I had him fastest on my watch. And uh, Johnson jumped in there behind him for a few laps, and it looked like he could run the pace, but it looked like more of an effort. Casey has uh, proven to himself he can run up front with good starts and battle with his teammate. But a couple little mistakes he made in the first two rounds kept him from winning. I think this time he's got just enough. Casey Johnson twisting a knee on Tuesday during practice, only rode that one day during the week, and on Wednesday had a, a huge amount of blood drawn out of that knee. So he's fighting it back. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Well, guys, I, I talked to uh, Dave Feeney. That's Casey's mechanic. I said, did you change anything? He got a big smile on his face. He said, no, we like everything just the way it is. I said, how's Casey? Is he okay? He says, he's ready to go race. Both those bikes are drastically different, despite on the same team. Casey Lytle has a much different riding style than Casey Johnson. Johnson uses uh, momentum and uh, good corner speed. As we take a look at the Suzuki starting grid, whereas Lytle, he likes the, the big jumping power. It's a totally different gearing, David. Well, the other thing, too, I noticed about their, their cornering was that uh, Casey Lytle was going wide and just exploding the berms. In fact, the flaggers were having to go back and put those hay bales or tough boxes back up on top of the corner after he'd come around, where Casey Johnson was just kind of tucking it around the inside, but when he came out, you know, A, point A to B, it was the same speed. 
We've got time right now to uh, listen to Casey Lytle about the differences of those bikes. His bike's a little bit different. Um, it's it's all personal preference. You know, I, I feel comfortable on on with one setting, and he he's feels comfortable with a different. You know, I think maybe it's our riding styles are a little bit different, and uh, his bike's a little bit different. I feel my bike's better. You know, that just just the way I like my setup, and I, we've tried each other's setups, and uh, I I I like mine. Number 25, Nathan Ramsey getting ready at the line. Ramsey recovering from an 18th position in the Anaheim opening round for a third, making the podium in San Diego. Last year, here in Phoenix, he took a fourth. In 1997, he was in eighth position. He did a nice job in his heat race earlier this afternoon to recover as well. He went down the first lap, and then he got into second. Surprise, Brandis actually on the face of the finish line jump to steal second. I just talked to Mitch Payton. He thought he rode super, and he said he had one lap time there towards the end that dipped down underneath 50, sec 50 seconds at 49 low. So he's got the speed. Lionel Johnson, Ramsey, Isaiah Johnson, Brandis, Harrington, Clark, Chiodi, Giovi, Tedesco, Bogart, Holland, Payne, Evans, and David Pinkery and many more as the gate has dropped for our 125 main event and he gets his third straight hole shot number 33 Casey Lytle but there is a battle going on with number 25 a lot of riders going down in the first corner David Pingree involved in that Lytle having the front end wash out look how many riders go by him one little mistake Nathan Ramsey number 25 is our leader number 49 is Michael Brandis. Also from that first corner, the last guy, he hasn't even actually gotten going yet. That's pro circuit rider Billy Payne. He's going to re into the field about 20 seconds down. The Yamaha of Troy teammates are in fifth and sixth. As we take a look at Nathan Ramsey. Ramsey of pro circuit, split fire. This is just a golden opportunity for him. And finally, he's got out there to a great start. He's got all this mixing up going on behind him, which should help him open up a little bit of a lead plus he's got Brandis right behind him not the two hot shots from the first two rounds Johnson and Lytle Ramsey Brandis and then number 62 and that's Rusty Holland this could be the race of his season here in the early going Johnson Casey Johnson is right behind him in fourth he's moved up another notch Chiodi, Chiodi is in fifth, and he's got a battle going on with number 33, Casey Lytle. So Chiodi is in a Yamaha of Troy sandwich right now. You see the leader of that sandwich. There's Chiodi in the yellow uh, shirt. And number 33, Lytle, bringing up the rear right there as this jumped his way into the camera screen. There you see him going for a move on the inside. David Pingree, a ninth and a tenth in the first two rounds, is out of the race. Let's go down to Marty to see why. Well, guys, what's happened is that on the crash, it has bent the front fork. The brake is literally rubbing up against the uh, front fork assembly area, and they're not going to be able to make it back into this race. Pingree watching everybody go by. That's unfortunate, especially when that all goes down in the first corner. You have no idea how you would have figured into the race. You just got to wonder. Our battle right now is between Johnson, and Johnson moves in front of Rusty Holland. And just, behind, right there. just behind this battle arc, going into the corner, Casey Lytle has made a move and simultaneously on Coyote. So the Yamaha Troy riders moving up the field, but Ramsey has really opened it up out front. Ramsey is our leader, and boy, has he opened things up. Now the big problem that Ramsey's had has been the crash-itis. Riding over the edge too much. There's Casey Johnson on the move. Well, hopefully he's put all that behind him. And some of that, those crashing problems have been uh, due to the fact that he's been trying to come through the path. So now that he's got clear sailing, maybe he can do things a little bit differently. But just in front of these guys, he wasn't able to get over this big triple right here. He made a mistake just prior. And there you see those guys closed in on him a little bit. Ramsey Brandis. Casey Johnson, Holland, Lytle, and Keone is our order. It takes so much strength to get out of that corner, get lined up straight, just blitz the top of those loops. Especially on a 125. Doesn't have the power of that 250 where you get that rear wheel spinning on the top to just leap you forward. 
Casey Johnson putting the heat on. Brandis cuts to the inside. Oh, they don't want to touch. Brandis holding on to second place. Casey Johnson still thinks that he is the man to beat no matter where he is on the track. I think I am starting to think like that now. Um, you know, everyone's like uh, asking me like questions on the track and stuff. Like me and Casey Lattle, we uh, talk about things on the track and, you know, he jumps way bigger stuff than me. You know, he's a, he's a really good jumper and he goes for stuff. And uh, I kind of seem just to be more conservative and, and race the track and just stick to the basics. And, uh, you know, lately that's been working for me. So I think I'm just going to stick to that. Nathan Ramsey is still our leader, and he now has as much as a five-second lead on Michael Brandis. That would have been a little bit bigger, Art, had he not messed up the triple that last time. There's a little triple leading up to the big one, and if you don't get that dialed, you don't have the speed on the 125 to get over it. The 125s continue, and look at this. The battle is on between Casey Johnson and Michael Brandis. Will Casey hold on? Yes, he does. So now, Casey's got his sights on Nathan Ramsey. We'll see if he can catch up. The 125 action will continue after this. completely restyled the Katana 600 and 750. From their dual halogen headlights to their four into one stainless steel exhausts. Same time tomorrow? Yeah. So now they're just as impressive on the outside as they've always been on the inside. Shh, everybody, get ready, okay. There's me, and there's my four by four. I'm picking up some speed. Here I go, up, woo! Look at me move, and I look great doing it! Woo, yeah! Look out, everybody. Here comes the coma man. You're the bomb, baby, the bomb. The man. Eh. So, what do you think? I am everyday people. I have a dollhouse at home, and I like to play with the furniture. Actually, I like to put on a red sweater and look at my old high school yearbook. I like to stretch out on the love seat with a nice flavored coffee. And then play some football with the guys. Welcome back to 125 Action here in Phoenix, Arizona. Nathan Ramsey out in front of these two. Johnson and Brandis battling it out for second place. Holland is now in third with Lytle in fourth. And the black pass. That was beautiful. You could see Brandis coming down that straightaway, lined himself to the inside. He wasn't just going to give it to Johnson. He made him earn it. Johnson's just too solid. Didn't even phase him. Lido getting in front of Holland, I believe, in that same turn. So now what happens is as our leader, Ramsey, looks over his shoulder, comes to the mechanics area, just ahead of 16 there, Johnson. He knows he's in second for good. It's going to be a battle, especially when they approach Lappers. The first Lapper they're going to approach, though, would be Ramsey's teammate, Billy Payne. A four-second lead right now. Lido making the move. Number 33. He gets in front of Holland. So now Lytle has moved up the fourth. Ramsey, Johnson, and Brandis are top three right now as Ramsey goes over the finish line jump. He still has a four-second advantage on Casey Johnson. Brandis is also about four seconds behind in third. And Lytle about five seconds behind him. And right now what's happening is Ramsey goes to the mechanics area. You can see the arms waving. His teammate, Billy Payne, was in between him and second place runner Casey Johnson. But now Payne has moved over. Johnson has clear sail and he can look up the track and see the leader as we go back to Coyote. Moving around Rusty Holland. So Johnson, who has proved, especially in the opening round, David Bailey, that he can come from out of nowhere and challenge. Remember the heat race, he came from 17th back to 7th, and then in the main event came from 7th to 1st. In fact, the only lap he led was the last lap. 
taking over from uh, Casey Lionel. Well, he'll tell you with a big smile on his face, that's the only lap you need to lead. We could be looking at the same scenario here because he is barely inching up on Ramsey right here, 25. Ramsey has just been inspired by this whole shot. Having a clear track, watch right here, he's gonna triple that. There you see Casey Johnson taking that inside I was talking about. It doesn't look as fast, but in the end, it comes out about the same. Let's check in trackside with Marty Reed. Yeah, we're down here with Dave Feeney. He's got about three seconds to make up. He headed down to 2.7, it came back to three. Are you worried? No, I think we got him handled. Uh, Casey's been training really hard, and I think we proved at Anaheim that we can run him down from behind. He's still got that big smile on his face, guys. Can't wipe it off. Oh, right behind the leader, What's Casey that, Brandon? Johnson. Casey Johnson had, had made a mistake and lost a lot of time, so now Ramsey can look over his shoulder and see a bigger lead while looked like Coyote had problems. Yeah, Coyote went flying in that, that section over there, and it's too bad. To, uh, that's his last race before going back to Europe. He looked so smooth in the other races this year with very little Supercross experience. Just coming over here to say, hey, I want to get some experience. Here's Ramsey, number 25, our leader. He just worked his way around the section where Coyote had problems. This is the double jump right here with a lap ago. See how he cased that a little bit. Casey Johnson cased it so much he lost a lot of time. It always feels good when you've got a lead, you've got somebody breathing down your neck, and then all of a sudden you look back and you've got a little bit more gap. Helps you relax. Our Honda stopwatch is underway, so check out the interval between Ramsey and CJ. A six second lead he's enjoying right now is Lytle. He's done a nice job of working through the field, but a little bit surprised that he wasn't able to hang with his teammate. Nathan Ramsey, our leader, looks over his shoulder, but he's been able to keep a good edge on the second place rider. Right now, what it comes down to, Art, is no mistake. He can even back it off a little bit with the lead he's got, as long as he doesn't make a major mistake in making decisions, get through the lap riders, or come up short on a double jump. Looks like he's got this one in the bag. Four laps to go in our 125 main event. 15 lap main event for the 125s. Whereas the 250s coming up next will go for 20 laps. Oh, this has got to be a great thrill for Nathan Ramsey. He's been looking, as we said earlier, for a breakthrough race. Gets over both triples clean that time. He's approaching the section where Coyote had problems. So they double up onto this little stair step over that plateau into the corner. Watch the speed he carries through this loop section. Not quite as good that time, but he's been getting through there so much faster than everybody else. Ramsey Johnson, Brandon Slidell, and Coyote is now out of the race. Isaiah Johnson has moved up behind Lytle. If Ramsey can hold on and win this one, this really could put him over the edge. Give him that confidence he needs to go out there and battle with Johnson. He knows right now that the way the gap has stayed, he is just as fast as anybody else in this field. Brandis still held on, holding on to third. You see him, looks to me like he is sort of settled for third. Brandis. by his posture, he's not quite right. as aggressive looking, Mark. He surely is not, is he? He's in third place in the points trying to protect that. Let's go back down to Marty. Yeah, down there with a very nervous John Mitchell. Just a little over two laps to go now. Yeah, um, just want to get these laps out of the way, you know, and uh, hopefully we can pull this thing off. And you're right, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm going to let him go back to work, guys. Well, the reason why he's got reason to be nervous is he moves around a downed rider right there as Casey Johnson in that last lap made up a lot of time. That changes everything when you look back and see somebody closing that fast and start to run a little tighter. Got a three-second lead, but two laps to go. The white flag is waiting for them at the finish line jump. Here's Michael Brandis, number 49. And Brandis is doing what I was talking about before with Ramsey, just 
riding around the racetrack, not putting a lot of energy into it, just making sure he doesn't make any mistakes. And in doing so, he hasn't lost any time to Casey Lytle. Only one lap to go. Nathan Ramsey on way to his first victory. Boy, Casey Johnson right there behind him has really closed the gap. Johnson, number 16, riding on the edge right now. The, the fans are coming alive. And look at that. Casey Johnson really putting the heat to Nathan Ramsey. Oh, if he wins this one, he will really deserve it. Ramsey just edges out in front. That was a good gamble right there. Go to the inside, see if you can make a, make a mistake. The track is running out for Casey Johnson. The checkers for Nathan Ramsey. Casey Johnson in second. Horrendous is bumping around the course trying to make third. Casey Lytle in fourth. Isaiah Johnson in fifth. His first victory ever. Nathan Ramsey. And we'll be back shortly as Marty Reed will be talking with Nathan Ramsey. You see him right there. A crowd of two-wheeled enthusiasts gathers at the Honda factory in Marysville, Ohio. Today, we are proud to introduce to you the Honda Shadow Aero. The bike's a real hit with the crowd. The Aero sports the latest in streamlined design with an exhaust pipe right out of the pages of science fiction. Here's Miss Aero showing off the bike's dazzling colors. The Honda Aero is available today, and what the verdict in Marysville? There you have it, and it's full speed ahead for the bike of tomorrow. Discover the amazing hitting secrets of America's finest baseball school in Teaching the Mechanics of the Major League Swing 2. Tommy Mansky's powerful teaching video that features the same revolutionary techniques that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches have been simply amazed at their students' rapid week-by-week -week improvement. These award-winning techniques benefit players of all ages and ability levels and make a valuable addition to any coach's library and a great gift. At just $29.95, call now. It's a new season. It's a new attitude. It's a 25-year celebration of Supercross, and it's coming to a city near you. Toyota Trucks presents Supercross. The best in the world are making the whole shot, taking the triples, and ready for battle in the bone-crushing race for the number one place. It's your last chance this century to catch Supercross and all the players coming to a city near you. Supercross. You gonna miss it? I didn't think so. the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. Here are the top finishers in round three out of Phoenix, Arizona in the 125 West. Nathan Ramsey, what a great victory after taking the whole shot. His first victory in 125 Supercross. Casey Johnson, he's three for three in podiums. Michael Brandis, two for three in podiums. Casey Lytle, three for three in podiums. A great job. Casey Lytle coming in, I should say, in fourth place. So let's get down to Marty, who's got two of those finishers side by side. Yeah, I'm down here with the winner. Uh, look at the smile on this face. You can always tell a guy who wins his first big race. Congratulations. Hey, thanks a lot. It feels great. You know, I, this is what I've dreamed of and uh, been working my tail off for years, years on end. And uh, it, it feels unbelievable. I can't even explain it. You know, everybody's always been behind me. My family, my friends, everybody, you know, and I just, it just feels great. I think John Mitchell was jumping around so much over there. I could barely hold him down to do the interview with him. <laughs> I know he was nervous because I, I don't think I've ever been that nervous in my whole life. You know, I try, I try to take deep breaths and, you know, try to concentrate really good. But, uh, you know, I just tried to ride smart and fast. You know, Pro Circuit gave me a killer bike, Kawasaki. I like to think 1-800-COLLECT and uh, Mazda and Thor, Bridgestone tires, no fear. Everybody that's behind me, you know, I really, I really appreciate everything. And uh, hopefully, well, this ain't going to be the last of it. Well, from 18th at Anaheim, a third last time out to number one but let's swing over here also i know you're not happy you wanted to keep the string going but 
you almost got it with the lap traffic. He got tied up there at the end. Yeah, lap traffic was a problem. Uh, you know, they were doing a pretty good job getting out of the way in the blue flags, but uh, yeah, I mean, he rode a great race, though. I mean, uh, lap traffic and no lap traffic. He, uh, I wasn't catching him at all until we got into lap traffic. And uh, man, I just was pushing as hard as I could, making a couple of mistakes. But uh, you know, I know how he feels right now, and I was there a couple weeks ago, so I'm really happy for him. Well, I was talking to Dave Feeney when you had one of those mistakes, sort of like you almost cased a jump there for partially, and uh, and that set you back. You were at like 2.7 seconds, and then you were five. Yeah, I was just making a couple of mistakes, and you know, I wasn't riding uh, my usual self. I was kind of like, I don't know, making just little bobbles, you know, that were costing me seconds on the track, and. Uh, I was just so worried on catching him. I wasn't riding uh, smooth and conservative. I was kind of riding over my head. Well, guys, the thing to remember out of this, he may not be happy because he finished second, but he's still got the points lead. The points lead as we take a look at the Suzuki point standings. Casey Johnson, number one still, as you mentioned, Marty. Lytle still in second place. Brandis still in third. But the guy who's made a move to contend with those top three here tonight was Nathan Ramsey. Team Honda's Ezra Lusk has captured all the glory in the 250s so far with two wins and two races. But Jeremy McGrath is coming on strong. Can't Jeremy halt Ezra's run by breaking into the win column here tonight? The 250s are coming up next from Phoenix, Arizona. Listen to this. You can save up to 50% or more on real estate through bank foreclosures. Introducing the Foreclosure Magazine. The most timely, accurate, and complete source for bank foreclosure information available anywhere. Hear for yourself the results. We got this handyman special worth $65,000 for only $12,000. We saved over $50,000. I never thought we could afford property like this. Our subscription to Foreclosure Magazine helped us to save more than $250,000. My neighbors paid over $50,000 for their condos. With Foreclosure Magazine, I found a bank foreclosure for less than $20,000 and saved over $30,000. Call now and learn how to get this free video with all the steps to buying foreclosures. Learn how the pros buy foreclosed property. Thanks, Foreclosure Magazine. Thank you, Foreclosure Magazine. To order your three-month subscription and free video, please call the number on your screen and have your credit card ready now. A great tradition reborn on ESPN2. Friday Night Fights. This week, live, the main event, a Maryland backyard brawl. Andrew Council takes on Michael Ward. Then, Reggie Green and Jesus Rodriguez square off in an NABF title bout. Plus, Friday Night Fight celebrates Black History Month with a Jack Johnson retrospective. Friday Night Fights, Friday at 9 on ESPN2. Face Supercross, brought to you by Toyota Trucks, with you for the long haul. 50,000 fans here at the Bob now anticipating a great race as we are in the 250s. Art Ekman and David Bailey up top of the press box. And David, just before going on camera, you mentioned that this could be the most exciting race overall we've seen this year. Well, I think you're getting to the point where Jeremy is frustrated with not winning yet. Uh, and I can see the determination in his eyes. And then Lusk has this sort of quiet confidence like, eh, I can catch up to the guy anytime I want. Main event's 20 laps, I'll be stronger at the end. Raynard looked really good in his heat race. His first heat race win, I think that's going to pump him up a little bit. He's obviously happy with the horsepower on the motorcycle. He got a pretty good start. And Jeff Emick, he's, he's, uh, he looks strong off the starting line. If he gets the whole shot, he can just kind of hold up everything right there, make it a great battle. We're throwing a lot more into the equation beside just Jeremy McGrath and Ezra Lusk. Marty Reed, your observations. Uh, well, that's what's making this season so interesting. Despite the fact Lusk has won both of the opening rounds, they really have not been what you'd say decisive. There have been a lot of players throughout the night, and it's the same here. I mean, I was just talking with Jeremy Albrecht. You mentioned Jeff Emick, David Bailey. They have never been as confident. I mean, I remember last year when we come to the starting line, Emick would have that dazed look in his eyes like, what am I going to do? Well, he gave me a little wink just a second ago. I mean, he's got a good smile, confident smile. They had a great run. They feel like maybe tonight may be a return to that glory. As we take a look at the Suzuki point standings, Ezra has a 10-point lead on Factory Connections' Mike LaRocco, but Shona McGrath only 12 and 14 points back with Dowd in fifth spot. Will those standings change after tonight's battle? 
As we take a look at number four, Ezra Lusk. Last week in San Diego, Lusk was able to battle through a dangerous situation. I was just trying to play it smart, and all of a sudden I rolled to the inside of this jump. I did cut over to the inside, so I guess you could say I was kind of fading over, but uh, everyone else was, and all of a sudden I had felt two hard licks on my back, and I knew that somebody had landed on me, and next thing I knew I was on the brakes trying to stop from going off the track, and uh, that first lap or two I was just trying to fill all my body parts and make sure I had everything attached, and couple guys got by me or maybe just Ricky got by me and I didn't have much of a fight for him or anybody else at that point and I just tried to keep her on two wheels and and for the rest of the race I really didn't feel it I wasn't in any pain at all and when I got off the bike that's when everything sort of spasmed out Jeremy McGrath getting ready with Randy Lawrence his mechanic right next to him a little dry out here I've noticed and I've, these guys really taking their Extra liquids. Jeremy going for one more sip of water. Hoping he can get another hole shot like that. But it's going to be tough. He's Earlier, uh, David, we did talk about the stite. And uh, Jeremy McGrath was telling us about it. Even the best in the game have to work on the little things. And that's what Jeremy's been doing throughout the week. Uh, I mean, sometimes if you think, oh, I need to get better starts. And you go practice starts. and Sometimes it backfires because you're just concentrating so much on it. Sometimes it's better just to... Be more relaxed, but I haven't done it in a few days, so. <laughs> Sebastian Tortelli coming back in the semifinal round, number 44, and doing a good job. He's lined up all the way over there on the inside, right next to Mike LaRocco. Surprise, LaRocco, maybe he didn't have any other choice, but those guys are all the way to the inside. They would have to get a phenomenal j jump over the gate to have any chance in the first corner, but they can tuck around that inside, let maybe that pile up that could happen, drift out wide. Four out of the five years we've raced in the Phoenix area, the winner has gone on to win the championship. I'm talking about guys like Rick Johnson, Wardy, Jean Michel Bale, Emig at 97. Only last year, when Lusk, in an exciting race, beat Jeremy McGrath, and that not happened. Okay, we're set to go. And the medal has pounded the dirt. The gates are down. Number one, Jeremy McGrath, the whole shot. Mikhail Pichon in second, battling it out with Mike LaRocco. LaRocco with a great start. Now, if LaRocco can just ride as good as he does from the back of the pack with a great start like this, everyone's in trouble up front. LaRocco has been working with the famed Danny Hansen to improve his starting techniques. He says, hey, after 17 years, how do you change? But he's been trying. That was a nice little look that Pichon took on the inside right there just to keep Jeremy in check. Feet on the pegs. He just drove it right in there in that berm. Great balance. Jeremy McGrath getting pressure from Mikel Pichon. Mikel Pichon looking for his very first 250 Supercross win. Oh. McGrath looking for his 53rd. Pichon doing that double jump right there, landing on a hay bale. Saves it nice. He's got to stay in contact with McGrath or it's over. McGrath is too focused tonight with a start like this that he's been needing. He'd be gone. Lusk working his way through traffic. Not the start he needs with Jeremy out front, that's for sure. Jeremy now with a two-second lead on Pichon. LaRocco is having all kinds of problems with Damon Huffman, Larry Ward, then Emming, then Dowd, and then Ezra Lusk. Lusk has got a long way to go, David Bailey. He's got the confidence in his his training. He knows he can go as fast as anybody out there, maybe even a little bit faster. We're going to find that out tonight. Trying to work his way around Emig right now. All kinds of time. 18 laps to go as McGrath has the lead on Pichon. LaRocco now starting to pull a little bit of a lead in third place to Damon Huffman. And here comes Larry Ward. Ward battling it out with number 31, Damon Huffman of Team Kawasaki. Ward doing a great job through the woods, makes the pass. That was just all sheer determination, desire to get by, and muscle to get through those whoops that fast. Really good start for Kawasaki compared to the first two rounds. They got both their guys up in the top ten. Yeah, Ward with an 18th in the first round and eighth place in the second round. As we take a look at the field summary with McGrath, Michaud, LaRocco, Ward, and Huffman, our top five. Where is Lusk? Lusk is behind Emig, who's behind Dowd, who's behind Huffman. He's in eighth. He's got his work cut out. Just as I said. 
<laughs> he's got his work cut out, that's for sure. He's very confident in what he'll be doing. He'll be looking across the racetrack at various points to see where McGrath is to see if he's making or losing a lot of time. If he's losing a lot, you'll see him really crank it on, get more aggressive to make some passes. David, Roger DeCoster feeling that the, the 250 program has advanced maybe triple what it used to be, but the riders were complaining of arm pump in the first two rounds. Well, that's just nerves and high expectations. Kevin Windham is having the same problems, and he's on what would possibly be considered the best bikes out there and came into the season with a lot of people behind him. Lusk is on the move. Let's go down to Marty Reed. Well, you guys were talking about Ezra Lusk just for a second, but getting back to the Suzuki story, you know, we talked with uh, Mel Harris, the team manager, and uh, he said one of the differences also in the machines is that before the program was one that run out of Japan. Well, now they've centralized all those operations. They're getting a lot more results on the test track a lot quicker. There's Ward, number seven. That's so important to have that kind of support, just to know it, whether it even makes a difference or not, just to know that the factory's behind you like that, because I never had any doubts when I was at Honda. The, the battle for six, there's for Lusk, number four, and John Down, number six, the team Yamaha. Lusk has been trying to step it up as he got around Robbie Rayner. You see LaRocco going back the other way, then more than Huffman. Rayner getting in there, mixing it up, putting the pressure on Lusk now. Makes the pass. Rayner is moving. The checkers will be flying when we return to the Bob and Phoenix Arizona. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki Cruiser and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, sir? A Suzuki Intruder 800 and maybe a jacket? Or how about a Marauder 800 and helmet? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, I don't make the rules. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. This simple-looking device is the key to discovering your hidden potential. Introducing the Bowflex Power Pro. Bowflex uses patented power rod resistance to give you an incredibly smooth, natural feel for over 60 different health club quality exercises. It's time to get the results you want with no money down and payments as low as $33 a month. Call right now for your free video and brochure and discover the look you've always wanted with the Bowflex Power Pro. Attention, speed freaks. If you want to get the driver's seat for the Super Bowl of Auto Racing, you've got to call and ask for ESPN Classic. Beginning February 8th, ESPN Classic is coming at you with Daytona Week. Seven smoking days and nights of pedal to the metal mayhem. It's eight furious 500s. From the green flag to victory lane, see the greatest names in NASCAR history gun for glory. To get pole position, pick up the phone and call 1-800-CLASSIC and get ESPN Classic today. Are you old school? Welcome back to our main event, 15 big laps to go. Jeremy McGrath with our lead, Pashone in second. McGrath is holding a pretty good lead. LaRocco is still in third as the three have pulled away from Ward, Huffman, Dowd, Raynard, and Lusk. There you see Lusk still behind Dowd. He's got to get around. Raynard came up and passed them both. He had to move around some riders before he made the pass on those guys. So a little bit better start for Raynard. Here He's comes Ezra Lusk on the outside. He has the turn on down. Does he have the torque? Boy, Dowdy doing a nice job. Hold him off. That's the same section where Raynard made his move, but he did it on the inside. A little bit different timing. You can see the frustration on Lusk right now. He knows he's faster than Dow, but he can't get around. Get clear. There, another mistake. It's costing him big. Lusk loses another position rather than gaining one. And here's Robbie Rayner making the pass on Wardy. That's Huffman, number 11, in front of Rayner. So both team Suzuki riders really doing well as they proved in the opening qualifying heats. Here comes the section where Rayner has been fast. And jumps up onto that plateau. He's been taking the inside right there where Huffman went. Huffman's got the line, so he's got to do something else. 13 laps to go in our 20-lap main event from Phoenix, Arizona. It's Jeremy McGrath looking for his first win of the season. And he's got a big lead on Pashon. Beautiful. Rainer's where the battle is right here. Robbie Rainer. 
and Damon Huffman. Rainer's carving through those guys. Look at the lead he's already opened up on Huffman. Going wide so he can jump that triple. Rainer moving into fourth. McGrath, Pichon, LaRocco, Rainer, and Huffman. So we've got a Yamaha and two Hondas in the top three. And Burles goes down. That's the exact same section where he made a mistake earlier. We had the cameras right on him. Frustration for Ezra. He's not going to get that consistent finish he was looking for. Don't forget, though, the time here in Phoenix last year. Jeremy McGrath had a 10-second lead on Ezra Lusk. And Lusk, by lap, lap 12, was able to reach him after a back-and-forth battle and block pass and take the lead in one of the greatest races we saw all last year. And that was just from the incredible charge and desire of Lusk. Lusk, I also believe, is one of the faster, or one of the best, actually, on the entire racetrack and putting it together the last two laps of the race. Just putting on an incredible charge like we just saw from Casey Johnson in the 125 class. Now it looks like Lusk is having problems. He's really dropped off the pace. Maybe he's got a mechanical problem uh, that Marty Reed can check into after that crash. It's David. a flat front tire. Flat front tire for Ezra Lusk. He's just trying to hold out for points right now. Boy, I'll tell you he's what. He's got 10 gonna, laps to go, though, David. If you're going to get a flat, front tire is the worst. He just can't steer the bike. He can't turn. He can't do anything. For him to do a triple is disastrous. I sure hate to see the bad luck catch up with him the way it did last year with that tough box cover. And what an unfortunate deal. So Ezra Lusk is going to be lapped by Jeremy McGrath any moment. As Jeremy, number one, sees nothing but points in making that move right there. Boy, this is huge. Lusk almost having the front end wash out right there, right in front of his mechanic. Mike Gossler. Impossible to steer. So now it looks like if LaRocco can hang on to third, this might inherit the points lead. When was the last time that happened? Been a while. LaRocco, though, is pretty strong. And if he holds his position, who is, was currently uh, coming into this race 10 points behind Lusk in second place, He's already got that. This is this is uh, really unfortunate for Lush. It had to happen that early in the race. If it was late in the race, he could nurse it home, but he's going to finish all the way at the back of the field. Checking out the Honda stopwatch. We've got a battle going on. Pichon. And Pichon. there goes uh, LaRocco. Pichon has really done a good job at staying in front of uh, LaRocco. He has stayed close to Jeremy, too. As soon as they get into lap traffic, that's going to be in Pichon's favor usually. You already heard Jeremy talk about that after the heat race win. Jeremy and Wyndham going by almost 30 seconds down. So it's uh, showtime. Pichon, LaRocco, Raynard, Huffman, Ward, Tortelli. That's our current summary. And Jimmy Button having to restart that four-stroke. It's the same exact section that that uh, Ezra Lusk had his problems. The official attendance, 48,702 in this beautiful facility. They nicknamed the Bob. And it's number one, Jeremy McGrath, looking forward to his first victory of the season with now seven laps to go. Jeremy McGrath, Team Chaparral, an independent team effort that's supplied by Team Yamaha. Well, what a great effort it's been for, for Chaparral, winning the championship last year as an independent team. McGrath holding a pretty good advantage right now over Lusk. He opened it back up a little bit, but now they're coming into a lot of riders lapping the tail enders. McGrath, a win here, would put him right in the fight for his sixth Supercross title in seven years. Let's get out of Marty Reed. Yeah, down here with Randy Lawrence, and you were really worried about all that lap traffic, because that looks like the only thing that can stop him right now. Yeah, this track's actually kind of simple. So uh, we got out, we got a really good lead, and uh, we don't need a bunch of lappers racing each other, and uh, not obeying the blue flag to get in the way and let Michon catch up and make it a little more interesting than we want. So you're breathing a little easier, because he's got some open track now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot easier. <laughs> Take it, guys. 
Jeremy McGrath with five laps to go. It's still Pichon in second, now going through the lap traffic. LaRocco in third, and Lusk, something's happened to Lusk because he's keeping up with LaRocco. Well, it looked to me like he had a flat, Art. You sure Team Honda doesn't have some miraculous uh, air filter system for the front tire? I don't <laughs> think so. I just could have sworn it was flat. It doesn't look flat now. Our field summary, McGrath, Pichon, LaRocco, and Rayner. I wonder if it might have been some other type of mechanical problem other than a flat front tire. Something obviously went wrong there for a period of a few laps because he just seemed to back off the pace. You could see that even in his riding posture, he just didn't look aggressive at all. Now he's gotten aggressive again. Number five, Mikel Bichon. He's done exactly what he had hoped to do here in the early going of the season. And that is be as consistent as possible. Was shown a second place in the opening round, a fifth place in San Diego, and right now was shown in second place once again. No, Honda was concerned about having somebody to back up Lusk just in case he had any problems, and Pichon has done a fine job. Marty, and he found out something about Lusk's bike. Yeah, talk to Mike Gosler, guys, the, his mechanic. He thinks that they took damage. They got a dent on the pipe. You know what that means, lack of horsepower, so he ain't going anywhere. What's confusing me is every once in a while you see that logo out there on the front tire. You get in through a rut. Sometimes it looks like it was flat, but it's not flat. My mistake. Sure looked it. Well, what have we been broadcasting together? Four years and that's your first mistake, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I'm gonna, that's going to be an awful flight home. <laughs> three laps to go here in Phoenix, Arizona. And what we thought would be one of the more exciting races of the year has turned to be a runaway. There you can see the Dan on his pipe right in there. He has lost some horsepower, obviously. Mike LaRocco gunning for third place. This would, this would be his third consecutive third place in three rounds to open the year. And he got a great start. He's got to be happy about that. Well, to get a good start and get up there and ride solid, I think he's got to be happy. But I know Mike, and I think he's going to be a little bit disappointed that he wasn't able to capitalize on it, get out there and challenge Jeremy. LaRocco has not won in Supercross since Pontiac of 1995. He's had no wins in the last three years, despite six podiums. But this year, he's already got half of that number in the season. Considering that he had the problems he had with his knee leading into this race. White flag. He's done a pretty good job salvaging this weekend where it came in maybe 90 percent. What I was going to say before David Bailey is what we expected to be one of the tightest races of the season really has turned into uh, a tremendous run for three riders. Jeremy McGrath, Mikel Pichon, and Mike LaRocco with a big separation between the three. The flash bulbs are popping. Jeremy McGrath is looking for his 53rd win. He has won a race seven consecutive years. Only Wardy on a Kawasaki has won more consecutive years. Jeff Ward had eight victories in eight years. I should say eight consecutive years. As taking the checkered flag, Jeremy McGrath. Pichon already across in second place. And here's Mike LaRocco in third. It looks like Raynard, Huffman, and Ward, the next three riders. Raynard already across the finish line. There's Huffman. Well, I got to think about what you said. Whoever wins this round seems to go on to win the title. The advantage has got to be in Jeremy's favor now. Well, we'll quickly total up the points and see what we have. And we'll be right back as Marty Reed will be downstairs talking to these riders when we return. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Everybody I know calls her the cow, even people I don't know. I threw a parade for the cow because it definitely needed something to honor this moment. 300,000! It's really saying something.
something to think that we went through 15 New England winters. Yay! It's just an amazing vehicle. It's been a, a really good buddy. It's been a good friend. And heck, we just need another excuse for a party. Toyota trucks. How many miles can you put on? Supercross has been brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs, and the financing to get them. And by Honda, inventor of all-terrain vehicles. Honda, best on earth. Welcome back to an excited Bob here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Bank One the Ballpark, they call it. For short, the Bob. And our winner, Jeremy McGrath, his first win of the season, the first win for Yamaha on the season, and it puts him into first place in the point standings. Mikel Pichon, Mike LaRocco, Robbie Raynard, Damon Huffman, Larry Ward, Kevin Windham, Emig in the top eight, followed by Tortelli. Let's go down to Marty Reed. A very happy Jeremy McGrath. We talked about how close this race we thought it was going to be, and all of a sudden, you just blew away. Well, the track tonight wasn't so hard, you know, it wasn't difficult, it was all in a start, and, and uh, we've been working with Yamaha, I gotta hand it to those guys, they've, Randy and, and Team Yamaha were doing good with my bike, along with Bridgestone tires, and, and we got a hookup out of the gate, you know, um, before I was having trouble holding the wheel down, and tonight I just nailed both starts. We talked about that after the heat race, and you gave the credit to the Bridgestones, did you do anything different, though, as far as weight transfer? No, not really. We just added air pressure to the tire, and, and those bridge stones, we, we put a little more rounder tire rather than, like, flatter and try to get a little less traction because my bike has great horsepower. I'm not missing anything there. It's just uh, these days, everyone's so good, you need to nail the start, and that's what we did. Uh, by our quick math, you lead the points now by one. Well, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> Okay, as we check out the points, Jeremy McGrath with this victory here in Phoenix, his first win in Phoenix, gives him a one-point advantage over Mikel Pichon and Mike LaRocco. We've got three guys battling it going into Seattle, David Bailey. Well, I guess the, all that closeness we were talking about in the main event, that just kind of waited until uh, the point standings. Now these guys are just locked in a great battle, and Jeremy is back where he feels he belongs. I, I'm really happy for him, and uh, I feel a little bit for Ezra Lusk. Four out of five riders uh, previous to win Phoenix have gone on to win the championship. And don't forget this fact that Jeremy McGrath, once he has gotten into first place in a points race, has never lost the championship. Uh, even though the Red Rider revolution was attained a bit by this guy, number one, Jeremy McGrath, going to Seattle. Going to be an interesting mix-up because we got a totally different soil right there. We've got big ruts. The guys like Rocco and McGrath are going to like it. I think so, and, and also a fine performance by Huffman staying up front there, but, and he does well in Seattle. Remember the battle he had with McGrath. McGrath has proved himself in every condition, rut, sand, mud, dry, hard, slick, coming from behind, hole shot. He's done it all. But I get the feeling in Pichon and LaRocco that when the track gets rutted a little tougher, they feel like they got a little something extra. Yes, Pichon looking very consistent. Does this surprise you? this year out of the heat race. He's had to go to the semis before. The start makes a big difference. But here on this track in Seattle with the soil being so sticky and so rutted, I think you have to ride kind of cool, almost look as though you're not even trying your hardest. And that's how Pichon looked. And Boys. even though Larry Ward came up and made a pass uh, briefly, and Pichon got him right back, just to, just to let him know that, oh, well, you, you can get around me, but it's not going to stick. Then Ward went down. You're always telling me these qualifying rounds, you got to make a statement. Right. Well, I think Ward was trying to make a statement, not only to Pichon, but uh, in front of this, what he calls a hometown crowd. His only, or his first win came here in 1990, and he always feels good coming back to this place. He looked aggressive in practice, but uh, that, that crash really hurt him. Big disappointment for the, the Washingtonians uh, as well as the Oregonians here in the uh, Kingdom who uh, drive up from the Oregon area that uh, Larry Ward had to go on to the semifinal round. But now, the second heat, we had uh, guys just take off, and it was a great four-man pack out front there. And it was, I thought McGrath was just awesome. He got uh, off to a start behind Wyndham and Lusk. I thought it would be pretty tough for him to get around those guys, but he, he was just, just awesome. He exploded yeah. until he got uh, into trouble right here. This was his first problem. He had made a pass, looked like he was gonna have an easy win, and until he gets collected with this lapped rider, 
the left rider really was out of Jeremy's way until he got cross rudded in the bottom. He veered into Jeremy's line and he had nowhere to go. He came back in about seventh place and was fighting back, made it all the way up to Steve Lampson on the bubble to qualify in fourth. Well, he had to pass his teammate right here. He comes up a little bit short on this jump. I think he would have been okay from that had it not been for that tough box right there. And watch his reaction when he stands up. Come on, get those things out of the way. That's twice now. So Jeremy's very unhappy with the way that went. And uh, he's been to the semi before and still won the main event. Art. He's been all the way to the LCQ and won the main event before. Lots of exciting names and exciting action coming up in the semifinal round after these words. Now, the ultimate in extreme crash action. Tommy McGrath move out to a huge lead.